Today, I put the 32 worst shooters in NBA history into a three-point contest tournament to find out who the worst shooter in NBA history is. Comment down below on who you think it's gonna be. Starting off in match one, we have the one seed Tim Duncan, who has a 75 three-point rating and a 17.9 career three-point percentage. He did really well, finishing with 14 points. He faced off against 32 seed Zaza Pachulia, who has a 25 three-point rating, and he has the most misses without a made three in NBA history with 31 misses. And just like his career, he made zero threes in this contest. And since we're trying to find out who the worst shooter is, Zaza moves on to round two. Next up, Carlos Boozer with a 33 rating and a 7.1 career three-point percentage scored a solid five points. Beating Anderson Verjao, who has a 28 rating and 2.3 career three-point percentage, Verjao scored zero points and moves on. John Livingston with a 45 rating and 17.8 three-point percentage scored three points. To beat DeAndre Jordan, who has a 25 rating and 15.4 Three point percentage. DeAndre scored zero points and moves on. Moses Malone coming in with a 43 rating and 10 three point percentage. He scored 10 points. Dwight Howard was next with a 25 rating and 21 three point percentage. He scored seven points and moves on. Despite only having a 12.5 career three point percentage, Bam Adebayo has a 65 rating, helping him drop 14 points. Beating Mark Eaton, who has a 25 rating and zero three point percentage, scored seven points and moves on. Really close match next. Kareem with a 36 rating and a 5.6 three-point percentage dropped nine points, which was barely enough to beat Steven Adams, who has a 26 rating and 6.7 three-point percentage. Adams scored eight points and moves on. Giannis, one of our better shooters in the contest, coming in with a 64 rating and 28.5 three-point percentage, he scored 13 points. Matumbo, on the other hand, only has a 25 rating and a zero three-point percentage, scoring only four points. Matumbo moves on to round two. Two Lakers legends up next. The first was Kwame Brown with a 40 rating and 11.1 three-point percentage. He faced Shaquille O'Neal, who has a 25 rating and 4.5 three-point percentage. They ended up tying 7-7, and in the tiebreaker, it was Kwame beating Shaq 9-8. Shaq moves on. Our second highest rated shooter, Westbrook, up next, coming in with a 69 rating and 30.9 three-point percentage. He had the high score of the round with 18 points. Facing Rudy Gobert, who has a 25 rating and zero three-point percentage, he managed to drop only four points. Gobert moves on to round two. One of the lowest scoring matchups was next. Andrew Bogut with a 33 rating and 12 three-point percentage scored only two points, while Rick Smith with a 26 rating and 11.5 three-point percentage scored six. So Bogut moves on. Monty Williams up next with a 48 rating and 11.1 three-point percentage. He scored a solid 13 points. Ben Wallace with a 25 rating and 13.7 three-point percentage scored only six points. So Wallace moves on. Andre Drummond with a 42 rating and 12.6 three-point percentage put in an unbelievable round scoring 13 points. He faced Sean Bradley who has a 25 rating and 21.4 three-point percentage. He did pretty good scoring eight points but moves on to round two. Despite having half the three-point percentage of his brother Giannis with 14.5 percent, Thanasis has a higher three-point rating of 66, helping him score 14 points. He faced Kendrick Perkins who has a 25 rating and zero three-point percentage scoring a solid eight points. Perkins moves on. 2k putting Ben Simmons in a G League jersey here with a 35 rating and 18 three-point percentage, Benjamin scored 11 points, which was enough to beat Zubak, who has a 26 rating and 8.3 three-point percentage. Zubak scored seven points and moves on. Rookie Asar Thompson up next with a 49 rating and 15.5 three-point percentage so far in his career. It's actually higher than his brother, who has a 13.3 three-point percentage so far. Asar scored 11 points though, beating Haslam, who has a 25 rating and 12.7 three-point percentage. Haslam scored eight points and moves on. Our final match of round one, we had Wish Charles Barkley up first with a 41 rating and 26.6 three-point percentage. He scored nine points. Lastly was Joakim Noah with a 26 rating and zero three-point percentage. He only dropped five points. Joakim moves on. On to round two, Zaza Pachulia facing Anderson Verjao to start. Zaza was up first and he finally managed to hit a three-point shot, scoring three points in this contest. Unfortunately, he was no match for Verjao who went off this round hitting two money balls. He finished with eight points, so Zaza moves on to the quarterfinals. DeAndre Jordan versus Dwight Howard next. DeAndre also scoring his first points in round two. He hit two money balls as well, scoring six points. Going into his last rack, Dwight only had four points, then caught fire hitting three money balls, finishing with 10 points. So DeAndre Jordan moves on to the quarterfinals. Next up was Mark Eaton versus Steven Adams. Eaton put in a solid round, hitting four threes, which included a money ball. He scored five points. Adams put up a better round though. He 
managed to hit six threes, including two money balls, scoring eight points. So Mark Eaton moves on to the quarterfinals. Shaq versus Matumbo up next. Matumbo caught fire this round. He hit four money balls throughout the round and finished with 11 points. Shaq put up a great fight though, going into his final rack with only two points. He hit three money balls to finish with eight points. Shaq moves on to the quarterfinals. Next, we have Rudy Gobert versus Andrew Bogut. This was a really close, low scoring match. Gobert hit a money ball and had five points halfway through the contest, then didn't hit another shot till the last rack, finishing with six. Bogut was garbage all round with only two points going into the final rack. He hit one normal ball and a money ball to finish with five points. Andrew Bogut moves on to the quarterfinals. Next up is Ben Wallace versus Sean Bradley. Wallace was up first and he was dog water. He only hit two shots to score two points. Sean Bradley didn't need to do much to beat him and he didn't. Hitting three shots and a money ball, Bradley scored five points. So Ben Wallace moves on to the quarterfinals. Kendrick Perkins versus Zubots next. Perkins was up first and did not disappoint. Going into the last rack, he had two points, hit two shots, and finished with five. Zubots went into the final rack down one with only four points, but clutched up hitting two shots to finish with six. Perkins moves on to the quarterfinal. The final match of round two was Udonis Haslam versus Joakim Noah. Haslam went first, having a very solid round. He hit six shots in total, including two money balls, finishing with eight points. Joakim, on the other hand, didn't do as well. He had only four shots all round to finish with four points. Joakim, the final player to move on to the quarterfinals. Into our first quarterfinals match, we got Zaza Pachulia versus DeAndre Jordan. Zaza was up first, and he had his best round so far, hitting two money balls and two normal balls. He finished with six points. DeAndre Jordan had five points going into the final rack, only needing one to tie it, two to win it, and he bricked every shot and finished with five. DeAndre Jordan moves on to the semifinals. Next was Mark Eaton versus Shaq, and this was another really close matchup, so close that they tied 7-7 and had to go into a tiebreaker. Mark Eaton dominated in the tiebreaker, though, hitting three money balls on his last rack, he finished with nine. Shaq was unable to match this performance, though, only hitting four shots all round and no money balls, he finished with four points. Shaq moves on to the semifinals. Next, we had Andrew Bogut and Ben Wallace facing off. Bogut up first, clutching up. He had his best round of the tournament. Hitting three money balls in total, he finished with seven points. Ben Wallace clutched up as well though, hitting more shots than Bogut with five. Unfortunately, he hit no money balls, so only scored five points. Ben Wallace moves on to the semifinals. The last match of the quarterfinals was between Kendrick Perkins and Joakim Noah. Perkins was the first to go, and he had the best round of the quarterfinals, hitting four money balls, he scored 10 points. Joakim Noah followed this up with his best round of the tournament, hitting five shots total, but only one money ball, he scored six points. Joakim is the final player to move on to the semifinals. And we are on to the semifinals. Only four players remain. Up first, Shaq versus DeAndre Jordan. DeAndre started things off hot with a round I didn't see coming, hitting four money balls, he put up a score of nine. Shaq found himself going into the final rack with only four points and after missing his first two money balls he hit his third to get up to six then hit another and clutched up hitting his last shot to score 10 points and beat deandre jordan by one deandre moves on to the finals and our last match to determine the second finalist between Ben Wallace and Joakim Noah. This one wasn't nearly as high scoring as Shaq versus DeAndre. Ben Wallace started things off hitting two money balls. He scored a respectable six points. Joakim Noah was complete garbage though and only scored two points. So he moves on to the finals. And we are hopping into the finals to find out the worst three-point shooter of all time, DeAndre Jordan versus Joakim Noah. We got DeAndre Jordan up here first. Let's see what kind of score he can put up here. I mean, I'm not expecting much from either of them. Something over five points honestly might win it. Not a great contest for him. He still has his money ball rack, though. If he could hit something on there, that'd be huge. There's another shot for DeAndre Jordan. Up to two, misses the money ball. They're looking close, but just none of them are following. That one's no good. Onto the final rack. Oh, he did. Oh, he hit the final money. That one went in. Okay, I, I thought he missed that. But the final money ball went in there. He's up to five points now. Last shot. Gets it off in time. It's no good. DeAndre Jordan finishing with five points. And we got Joakim Noah up next. Let's see if he can beat five. Not a hard score to beat, but it is for these guys. First rack, and he starts off with a make. What a great start for Joakim Noah. Can he hit a second one on the first rack? No, we cannot. I mean, one was asking for a lot. 
And there we go. He hits his first shot on the second rack too. Already up to two points. Deep three. Can he hit a deep three? No. It'd be cool if he hit a deep three. That'd make him tie with DeAndre Jordan. But he is bricking shots now. These angles suck. He hits another shot there. So if he hits one shot here, he ties it up. One more to win it. The final shot for Joakim Noah. It's no good. He ends with five points tying with DeAndre Jordan. So we are running this one back. DeAndre Jordan up here again. He's just... His shot motion is just so bad. Hey, there we go. He hits a shot, though. Up to one point. Can he hit a money ball? Yes, he can. Up to three points after two racks. Deep three. He hit a deep three. That's like a guaranteed win. We got this terrible angle where we can't see if the balls even go in. And one goes in there. And DeAndre Jordan already up to four points. He's doing so much better this contest. Second deep three. And that was so close. That was so close to going in. Onto his money ball rack now. He hits one. He's already up to six. Doing better than that first round. Final rack was six points. Hits another shot up to seven. Great round here for DeAndre Jordan. Time running down. Can he get his last shot up? The money ball. And that one is no good. So DeAndre Jordan ending with seven, which very well could get him the win. Joakim Noah only with five the first round. Let's see what Joakim can do here. Seven to tie it again. Eight to win. It's one shot on the first rack. Hits another two in a row. Three in a row. No, he can't do it. But two shots on the first rack is really good. He's onto his money ball rack. Interesting spot, but he hits one of his money balls. Can he hit a second one? No. Can he hit another shot here? There we go. He's up to five. Make that six. The money ball is no good. He needs one more to tie it up. Two shots. I mean, if he hits a money ball, he'll win this thing. But he is bricking everything right now. The money ball for the win. It is no good. Joakim Noah ending with six points, which means he wins the tournament. But that's not a good thing because he is the worst three-point shooter in NBA history. If you guys enjoyed this video, though, make sure you subscribe, like, and check out this video where I put the 50 greatest shooters into a three-point contest. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.